Hey everyone! In this video we will look at how it is to sketch with ink and watercolor on Canson Montval. I will be using the same old technique that I love a lot and that is starting with a simple pencil sketch on top of which we build up more details with waterproof ink and then add more personality to our sketch by painting it with watercolor. So I recently purchased a maxi pack of 100 sheets of watercolor paper from Canson Montval. It is a 300 grams student grade cold pressed paper, cellulose based and acid free. And you can find this pack at a very affordable price. I've read both positive and negative reviews about this paper, so I thought it's better to try it myself and make my own opinion. And being so much cheaper than, for example, the Arsh paper, that is 100% cotton, I do expect some quality differences. So let's see how this goes. So as you see, I start with a simple pencil sketch. Here I try to look at the proportions and draw a few directional lines, draw the main shapes and figure out the perspective. I am not too precise about the proportions because I can readjust them later on when sketching with a pen. Now what I mostly pay attention to is to make sure that the tower fits fully on the paper. We can approach sketching the tower by simplifying its volume into three different boxes and then adding the roof on top of those. And then with the help of the diagonals we can find the placement of all the windows and ornaments, the clock that are placed in the center. So drawing on this paper actually feels very nice, the cold press texture is quite soft so the pencil goes easily above it. And it's also a nice feel to draw on a thick paper. I just realized that the roof doesn't fit totally, so I will have to readjust the proportions now during the pen sketch and make everything a bit smaller. So during this step, I am basically building up more details on top of the pencil sketch. I'm not following the pencil lines with precision, but I try to take them mostly as guidelines, like a skeleton on top of which I can build up the more detailed ink drawing. I like to keep the pencil lines because I think they give more personality to the sketch and tell more about the process.
I start by sketching with a fine nib fountain pen and then I move to another fountain pen that has a thicker nib, a fuda nib and I use this one to make more bold lines that suggest more depth and show the direction of the light. Coming back to how it feels to sketch on this paper, but this time with a fountain pen, I still think it feels nice. The paper is thick and can hold a lot of ink and the soft small bumps in the cold press texture create a certain dynamic and make the lines be a bit more diverse, a bit more alive. So I think the sketch looks good as it is right now. I will let the ink dry for a couple of minutes before watercolor painting. Ok, watercolor painting. I start by making a mix for the sky. I'm using cobalt blue and a bit of lavender. Using the wet on dry technique I start to suggest the sky. I'm not looking after an even wash and I would like to paint the sky having loose margins. So I'll try to stop before the tape. So painting on this paper. The first thing I notice now when painting the sky is that the paint doesn't spread so nicely as it would on a 100% cotton paper. I feel like the paint gathers in small places and doesn't flow on the entire surface of the paper. I was expecting something like this because this is not a cotton paper and it is also student grade. But still, it feels quite frustrating not to have that nice even paint flow. I've read reviews that it buckles a lot. For me, until now, it didn't buckle so much, but I think it's because the wash is quite far away from the edges of the paper, and these dry edges help in keeping the paper flat. Now I will let you enjoy the rest of the watercolor painting process. I've added a few more text notes here and there, and then I'll come back and share with you a few more thoughts on this paper.
So overall I think you get a great value for the price. And I would recommend it for quick sketches that don't require heavy watercolor washes. It handled well a few layers of paint and then also the splatters and then the ink again. And it didn't buckle so much, but as I said before, I think it's because I didn't paint close to the margins of the paper. A thing that I didn't like is that the tape teared the paper a bit in some places. I wasn't expecting this. I tried to remove it carefully and it didn't tear the paper as much, but I think that if you don't remove the tape with caution, you might tear the paper quite a lot. And I also think it's good to practice on both student quality paper and artist quality paper. Of course, artist quality paper will help you to achieve better results, but it might also intimidate you because it's very expensive and maybe this will make you paint less. On the other hand, if you practice only on student quality paper, it's good to keep in mind that the paper has some limitations and it makes it harder for you to achieve good results. So it might be that you actually have better skills than you think. The paper really plays a very important role in achieving those nice transparent watercolor paintings that we all love. I will be using this paper for more quick sketches and thumbnail studies, but I will also paint on 100% cotton artist quality paper and try to find a balance in my learning journey. Let me know what's your experience with this paper, what's your favorite watercolor paper and the one that you definitely don't like. I'm very curious to know your opinion as well. I hope this video was helpful to you.